Ciao ragazzi, sono io, Evie. Hi guys, it's me, Evie, and today I would like to welcome you to my second video in my series on Scottish dialects. Today we're going to be delving into the weird world of Dundonian speech. Dundee sits on the east coast of Scotland, about halfway between Edinburgh and Aberdeen. And while it's one of the smaller Scottish cities, it has a dialect and slang structure that's really rich and recognisable. People here are generally very proud of it and want to keep it alive. However, for newcomers, it can be a little tricky to understand. In fact, Dundonian is one of the Scottish dialects that's most often described as a second language. There's a really interesting article about that, which I'll link below, and you should definitely read it if you want to know more. Having lived in Dundee for about seven years now, I'd like to think that I know a thing or two about it. In fact, I couldn't quite fit everything I wanted to say in one video. So if you'd like a part two, please let me know and I'll get that done for you. But for now, let's go. I want to start here with the very basics, numbers. Dundonians have a specific way that they say the numbers one to five, and then the numbers seven to eight. I'm pretty sure that all of the other numbers stay the same, but it's good to know these few. A lot of Scottish people will say the word one as yin, y-i-n. For example, if you wanted to say, could you get me that one over there? You might say, could you get me that yin over there? Or someone from Glasgow, for example, might say wan, as in just w-a-n. But in Dundee, the number one is usually ain which I would spell, and I think most people would spell it A-N-E. I've also seen it spelled A-E-N or A-I-N. I think it's just down to personal preference at this point, honestly. Could you get me that in over there? Or if you want to tell somebody a good one, you can say a good in. I like that one a lot. Moving on, number two is toi, not trois as in French, but toi with a W. Number three is, number three is the same actually. So one is in, two is toi, four is often said fower. And then five is the one that people trip over if they're not really used to the dialect. But number five is fev. I remember encountering this for the first time on the bus. I was sitting behind this guy who was on the phone and he was telling his friend that he would be in Glasgow at fev past fev. And I was like, fev past fev, what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> but I kind of figured out that he meant uh, five past five. As I said, six is the same. Seven is often said seven, and then eight is sometimes said acht. So let's go through them. Ein, twa, three, four, fev, six, seven, acht, and then just nine and ten. So if your friend or your pal, as we would say, has five kids, you might say he has fev parents. I say bairns because that's usually the dialect word that we use for children on the east coast, whereas on the west coast you might more likely hear somebody referring to kids as weans. Talking about numbers reminds me of a well-known Dundonian phrase. Now this isn't words of wisdom or an idiom or anything like that, but it's something people will often say when discussing the Dundee accent, or just for fun. Il ha twa pays, twa plain brides and an onion yinana. <laughs> or an an onion in an <laughs> I love saying that. This phrase, for some reason, is a bit of a meme, and if you've ever lived in Dundee, you will have heard it at least once at some point. It may look indecipherable, but trust me, it makes sense, so let's go through it. In plain English, this phrase would be I'll have two pies, two plain brides, and an onion one as well. Presumably the person speaking the phrase is in some kind of bakery ordering their lunch. In case you don't know, a bridie is a type of Scottish pastry that originated in Forfar. It's got kind of flaky pastry on the outside and meat usually in the middle. And the onion one part is probably, as well as just being fun to say, just referring to some kind of pastry that has onion in it. I don't know. <laughs> Translating this phrase can actually tell us a lot about Dundonian speech. I might have mentioned in my first video that the pronoun I in Scotland is often said as a, and then I'll becomes al. Whereas in Dundee, the I is often said as e, and then I'll comes out as l. You can see this in this phrase here, where the word I'll has become l, and then the word pie has become pe. 
This happens a lot in Dundee speech, where the vowels become sort of flatter, and you open your mouth more when you say them. You can see the difference between aisle and ale, for example. Like the I, the A often becomes flattened too. Like in this sign for a takeaway, which has been written takawa, and I really enjoy that. <laughs> I doubt that anybody here would actually call it a takawa, maybe they do, but it's just a sort of play on the way that people speak here. Some people have theorised that this kind of more open mouth and flatter approach to vowels allowed people working in Dundee factories to shout loud over the noise of the machines. Because Dundee actually has a very rich manufacturing and factory industry. I might actually go through this in another video because it's very interesting. Getting into specific phrases, something that newcomers might find a little bit tricky is the fact that Dundonians will often say is it instead of isn't it. Here's some examples. Instead of, it's hot today, isn't it? You might say, it's hot today, is it? You can see the kind of natural melody that my voice creates when I start speaking in a more of a Dundee accent, and that is something you will notice. Or instead of, he's nice, isn't he? You might say, he's nice, is he? Another way of saying isn't it in Dundee is the word eh. Eh, which can also be pronounced a, eh, is so much a part of Dundonian speech that it almost deserves its own video. And you'll often hear people saying it at the end of sentences. A or E is a way of acknowledging the person that you're chatting to or seeking a response. So for example, it's really windy today, don't you think? Might be, it's awfully windy today, eh? Or it's awfully windy today, eh? Although it's often rhetorical, it's kind of like saying, don't you think so too? Or what do you think? And you can either give a thoughtful response or say nothing back or say, oh eh, because eh also means yes. You can have a bit of fun with the word eh or a. Eh. While Dundonian vowels are sort of flat, their intonation goes up and down in a kind of sing-songy way. So eh is often said as two syllables, like eh. <laughs> Have you cleaned the house this weekend? Oh eh! Because of this, it's quite good to say when you're being sarcastic. It's kind of like, I right? Often means, I don't believe you in Scottish. Whereas in Dundee, you might say, oh eh! It's sort of being turned into two syllables. It's not just flat. It's got to have a little bit of music to it, you know? Let's give an example with a few Scottish words that we should know by now. I'm going to tack the five parents to the house after eh! which would be, I'm going to take the five kids to the house after, you know? As you can tell here, the word after is often said as after, especially by people with a strong Dundonian accent. Another distinct Dundonianism is the word were. This can mean one of two things. It can mean our, or it can mean were, as in we were or they were. A sentence that uses were in both of these ways might be, we were going to our house. We were going to our house. We were going to our house. Or I saw our football team on the telly. I saw our football team on the television. Wer can sound a lot like ur, which is the kind of more general Scots way of saying our. But trust me, there is a difference. And the more you stay in Dundee, the more you'll hear it here and there. When finishing a conversation in Dundee, a phrase that you'll often hear is see you after as in see you after. You'll hear this phrase between friends, family, maybe even co-workers, but even strangers that you don't know, like the person who works behind the counter in the local shop. It's kind of like see you later, but it doesn't literally mean that they'll see you later. It just means goodbye. It's just a friendly way of saying goodbye and maybe I'll see you. For example, you've just finished buying your evening newspaper, the Telegraph or the Tully as we call it here. You've just finished buying your tully and you say goodbye to the person who sold you the newspaper and they go see you after and you go see you after. Or they might say take care, which is another thing we say a lot in Britain. It's weird because you say see you after and take care to people who you don't actually know and I think it's really sweet. I'm gonna finish off with two words that are being used a lot by the younger generation in Dundee at the moment. So people who are in university or high school. The first one is damage. In Dundee, damage can be an adjective as well as a noun. 
and when it's used as a describing word, damage is a good thing. It means something is really cool or really high quality or just that you really like it. So if you want to tell your friend that you're going to have a party over the weekend and it's going to be really good, you might say, I'm going to have a party on the weekend, going to be damage. Or if you think somebody is really cool, you might say that they're damaged, as in, I love Danny, he's absolutely damaged. But if you don't like Danny and you don't think he's damaged, maybe you think he's a bit of an idiot, you might call him a belter. Now, there's no direct English translation for this word, but basically a belter is somebody you don't want to be around, a sort of embarrassing or otherwise unpleasant person. The word belter can also describe like a really good song or like a really big party, but in Dundee, a belter is a negative word to use for a person. It can be used humorously among friends as well, of course. Using insults as a sign of affection is fairly common here. In fact, expect it if you come. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's it for today, guys. I hope you found this video useful or at least entertaining. If you enjoyed it, please give me a like and check out my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you for the next installment, which should be sometime soon. I've got a few projects to do in between, but I'm going to do a Glasgow slang next. So look out. So look out for that soon. For now, have a lovely day, guys. Bachi bachi. See you after.